The first of the Hornby Class 800 Azumas has finally arrived. How do they compare to Hornby's previous Class 800s and how does this modern image livery stand up? It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. So we'll kick off with an unboxing of the five car set. We'll then get into a close up view and I'm also going to do a close up view against the prototype. We'll then get into the running session and into the summary and then we'll get into the scoring itself and then the final recommendation. Okay, let's get underway. Hi, welcome to today's review. So today we're looking at the LNER uh, Azuma, the Class 800. Uh, this is one of two Azuma five car packs that are part of the Hornby 2022 range, well, part of the Hornby 2021 range, uh, but they've just uh, arrived in January of 2022. Uh, this particular one, uh, just to look at the code, is the 3762, um, which comes in a DCC ready form. Uh, now, I will be putting DCC sound into this for the purpose of the running session, so we'll get a look at that later on. So I'm going to take it out of the box, uh, brand spanking new, and uh, we'll take a look at her uh, briefly here, and then we'll get into the usual uh, close-up views uh, and, uh, and get on to the running session. Okay, so let's get out of the box first. Okay, so it comes as a uh, five-car set, so you basically get uh, two trays. We'll take a look at both of these. First, you get the usual... Uh, leaflet which talks about uh, the maintenance, uh, the DCC elements of installation, etc. And also talks about removing the body and, uh, and where you add the DCC socket. So we'll, we'll definitely take a look at that later on. Um, and it also gives you, uh, I suppose, an important rundown on the order of the cars. So when you're actually putting the, the set together on the track. Okay, so let's uh, put that to one side. And we'll, we've got two trays here. So the first one's got the power and dummy car. So we'll actually take a look at that first. Now it comes in the, in the standard packaging. So this is pretty well identical to any of the previous uh, class 800s, uh, if you're familiar with those. And it's very similar packaging to what you get with say, a class 43 HST as well. Um, so it comes with this nice little protective film, which uh, protects the, the paintwork and then any kind of detail, and uh, you've got the overall polystyrene case then to protect the rest of it. So let's just take this one out first. So this is the power car um, in, in this Azuma livery. So I guess we will say so we'll take a close up view of this. And, and I guess one of the things when I did review the 800 um, in the GWR livery, uh, the main comment I had, I guess, from an appearance perspective uh, was getting a kind of a glossy finish on that particular livery because um, they did it on the HST, the Class 43 HST had a quite a nice glass finish, but the, f but the 800 didn't. Now this one doesn't either. Um, it has pretty well the kind of standard pristine type finish that you'd see on uh, most locomotives. And I think it does lose a bit by not having the, the more glossier finish. Um, we'll do some photographs and I will compare this to the actual running models, the, the real life Azuma, so that you can kind of get a feel for that. So we'll do that when we look at the close up view. Um, so I suppose we're looking at the, the overall livery here. I mean, in, in general, the level of detail is, is very good on these. Um, yeah, just looking at the roof. Um, got the very nice silver detail on the roof here and overall the roof is good apart from the pantograph and i did make this comment on the previous review as well uh, for the gwr and this is the same uh, this is a really flimsy little pantograph and i wouldn't even attempt trying to pose that because that looks like it's going to break off um, very easily uh, so that's a little bit disappointing um, ironically the very cheap eurostar has much more sturdier pantographs than this particular set. Uh, so that's a disappointment, and I will note that. I, I did note that originally on the GWR version as well. Um, 
you do get over, overall good levels of detail. You've got the destination boards there, uh, first class. So the labeling is very well done. That's pretty clear, actually. We should see that when we do a close-up view. Um, so that part of it is good. The body weight is good. These are heavy and it's a uniform weight as well. It's across the entire body. It's not like front loaded or back loaded. Uh, we don't have a, a driver, of course. Uh, we don't tend to have them in the Hornby models. Uh, but overall, I suppose it is pretty good looking. It's a little bit of a disappointment in not having the gloss finish. Um, I, I would have to say that. Uh, but overall, the detail level is very good, and I said things like the labeling detail is very cleanly applied. Um, now, there is seating in here, and there is also coach lighting in here, and we will take a look at that later on. Um, I can see the LEDs up there. Um, again, I did have an issue on the DWR version, was the lighting, the coach lighting was actually too dim. Uh, directional lighting was fine, uh, but uh, the, uh, the coach lighting was, was too dim. And we'll again, we'll take a look at that on this particular model. Um, one last thing we'll take a look at before we go to the dummy car is the kind of gangway area at the back here. A lot of labeling, a lot of detail. Um, again, looks 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 very nice. So that that looks, I think, pretty good. Uh, but a little, uh, you know, a couple of items there which have carried over from the previous class 800s, which it's a pity they weren't improved upon. Um, but I suppose that's what we've got to live with. Uh, the dummy car. Um, won't spend much time on this because it's pretty well identical uh, physically and is extremely light so it's really really light actually um, it seems to be the way with the dummy cars these days um, one last thing i didn't mention actually on the power car is it does have um, all-wheel pickup and all-wheel drive which is great and this should have pickup as well for the lighting function and there is facility to install a dcc decoder in here to control the direct direction lighting and we will we will do that uh, later on so we will take a look at that okay so um those two cars look pretty good uh, let's go back in the box and we'll take a look at the uh, the other three center cars now okay we've got the uh, three center cars uh, we'll take a look at these as well and um, again they come with a nice uh, protective film on them um, so we'll just take a look at one of these a uh, representative one so let's get them out. It's quite stiff. It's the first time coming out of the of the box. So again, these would have um, you know nice roof detail uh, on them, and nice gangways similar to what we had earlier. There's a little bit of a bend on that now on the on the kind of rubber. So there is a kind of a rubberized end piece, which which is nice. I do like that rubber effect uh, on the end pieces. That's there as well. Um, same level of underbody detail. Again, these are pickups. And uh, no, I'm just looking at it. It looks like only one of the bogies has pickups. Uh, I don't see pickups on that bogey. Um, so I think one of the points about the lighting on these is there no, there's no lighting control. So there's no, you notice on the coupler there, there's no, um, there's no actual contact on that coupler like you might have on a Backman DMU, for example, which would allow you to turn on and off the lighting. There, that isn't on these particular cars. It's again one of the gaps. Um, the fact that there isn't pickup on the second bogey is it's just a little bit cheapskate, if I call it that, um, because it does mean, for, if for whatever reason, um, and I'm not sure what we, if, we, if we will see this in the running session, but if, if you know if you get poor contact on one of them, usually if you've got the second bogey on there, uh, that'll uh, you know continue the, uh, the the lighting without any disturbance. You won't get any flickering. Uh, the other alternative is to have a big stay alive capacitor to do that but i'm not sure that these are equipped with with that so mm, that's a little bit disappointing uh, to see that uh, livery is the same as you know the uh, delivery the definition and all of that looks uh, the same as the power car we looked at and again the labeling looks really good um, as we had before and again we will do a, a close-up of one of these cars uh, uh, just to see how she uh, looks in, in a bit more detail. So, again, these are relatively light. They're probably the, the same weight as maybe a Mark III coach. Uh, they are longer now, so they, these are physically longer. And I guess the point I'll make uh, is that you do need to allow for that on your layout. They will hang over the curves more than your typical Mark III coach will. And um, if you've been running pretty tight on your layout in terms of you know, having various scenic elements very close to the to the corners, um, you you may 
have to go and move those and make some adjustments to your layout. I did have to do that when I got my first Class 800. And so it's always a good idea to maybe take the power car and bring it for a run around the layout at a very low speed or take one of these cars and just run it around with your hand uh, just to make sure there's no obstacles before you actually run the full train and potentially damage uh, damage the train, which would be an awful shame. So just a, a warning to give to you. Okay, so I think we're finished with, with the unboxing. Uh, we're going to do the close-up view and 360 view now and uh, kind of get uh, into that detail a bit more. Um, I suppose a couple of disappointing things here, and um, I will note them for later. Um, the, the, the pickup on the, uh, the second bogey there, not having that pickup is... You know, it was one thing not having the control. Now you've got less um, actual sources of current for your uh, for LED lighting. Again, so that's a bit disappointing. So three cars in this set, so five in total. Uh, there is an expansion pack with a four car expansion pack also going to be offered uh, to allow you to create a full nine car train. So that um, that's also going to be available. Um, I'm not sure what the, the, the availability date for that is, but um, that's not available yet. Okay. So uh, let's get on to the, the close-up view and uh, we'll get in and, and take it from there. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to get into the close-up view. So we'll done, do a run along the side of the power car. And this is really to give you a first view of the kind of detailing, the labeling there, the underbody detail, the actual livery registration. Uh, we'll get to see the roof in the next section when we do the 360 view. All of this is, is very good. It's to the same level as the previous uh, Class 800s from Hornby. And again, you can see the fantastic labeling there. Nice livery rendition, the nice door standing out. Again, that's kind of pretty well inherited from the previous versions of the Class 800s. The, really, the only new thing here is the livery. Do you see a bit of wiring come underneath there? I don't like to see that. A bit of untidiness there from a quality perspective. Uh, here we're going to look at one of the cars and again we're going to run alongside the body here uh, you can see the destination board there and again some of the signage there's a nice interior on these as well uh, now it isn't illuminated very well it's one of the issues with the model is that the uh, coach lighting actually doesn't work that good but there is a lot of nice roof detail as well and again we will see that in just the next section so these are very nice coaches um, you can see the, the rubber ends there as well in the gangway area and again, we'll see those when we uh, look at the 360 view. So here, I think this is, gives a quite a good view of the model, actually. Uh, we've got the, the power car and the dummy car together. And they are different, actually. So if you look at them, then unlike, say, the Class 43 HSTs, these are, they're actually different. They've got a different configuration on them. And I'll talk about that when we get into the value section as well. So that obviously means there's a bit more work in creating these. You can see the... Uh, the roof detail there again which which is in general pretty good and, and, and overall i'm pleased with it the main item i'm not pleased with is the pantographs uh they're very flimsy plastic they're not really poseable they look like they're just going to break off to be honest if you do anything with them uh so they are not good and that is inherited from the earlier versions of this model as well they all seem to have these pretty poor pantographs for a model of this quality uh, uh really not good so here we're looking at the three cars, uh, the three center cars. Again, they're all different. So you can see the different roof configuration, all three of these. And again, they're all very nicely decorated, uh, nice levels of detail. Uh, you see the gangway ends there with the kind of rubber uh, gangways on them, which, which is good. I do like that. Uh, now, unfortunately, the packaging doesn't fully protect those that well. And sometimes they do get broken off. People might receive these with, the, with a gangway, that rubber end being actually broken off. And again, I'll, I'll kind of factor that in the scoring. It, it, that's a bit of a letdown of the current packaging. And again, this is a high quality model and, and it probably deserves a little bit more on that side. But as you can see, these are nicely detailed models. Uh, again, nice levels of roof detail on them. They are longer. They're 13% longer than, say, a Mark III coach. And, uh, you know, I, I'll talk about that a little bit later on, that you really do need to provision the space on your layout for these because these are physically longer coaches. So now we're going to take a quick look, close-up view of the model, and then we're going to take a quick close-up view of the prototype beside it to kind of look at the comparison. And I suppose one of the, the gripes that I have with both the GWR and this model is they didn't go with the shiny finish that you see there on the right-hand side, which is prototypical of pretty well any modern train. Uh, you've got that kind of... Um, it, it's I suppose it's it's not quite a matte finish, but it's a more textured finish on the the actual model and it doesn't match the really nice shiny finish that you have on the uh, prototype 
Uh, so that is a disappointment and uh, that is one thing I would have liked had they done it because I think it could have made this a really spectacular looking train if they had gone with that. Now they didn't do it on the GWR version either and that was a disappointment. Uh, so, you know, it, it's not a deal breaker but it's something I would have liked to have seen and in general it's something I would like to see on all railway models. They're all, in, to be honest, in general they have a very unrealistic finish on them um, and this applies to the steam models as well i think a lot of steam modelers would only love to see a proper gloss paint finish on their models and not this kind of textured matte type finish that we get on uh, typical models and uh, the only other thing here is i suppose in this close-up here i'm showing of one of the door areas of the model and you can see a little bit of um, fuzziness there in terms of the registration of uh, of the, uh, the the paintwork and and the actual LNER logo it looks a little bit fuzzy. That's one of the things I noticed when I took it out of the box. So again, not perfect. So again, I'll, I'll kind of reflect that as a kind of a quality item later on when we do the scoring. So that's that's really it on the appearance stakes. So the next thing we're going to do is get into the running session. There is a full version of this. I'll put a link in the description for it. A lot of people may have seen it already. It is running with the sound installed on this. Uh, we've got a Lock Sound 5 decoder installed in the power car. I don't have one in the in the dummy car. That would have been really expensive. And I'm using an iPhone speaker for the sound. Now we're turning down the sound for the purposes of this running session, but obviously in the standalone running session video, uh, the sound is up at full volume. So this is to kind of give us a feel of running at the different speed levels and in general this model is, is excellent it's got a really steady slow crawl it's got a good mid speed and it's got a good high speed uh, the only issue i have from a performance perspective with it uh, is the the linearity of the speed curve and the ability to get a proper ski, a speed curve for it and what i mean by that is that if you apply 50 percent power you would expect to get 50 percent velocity out of the model can tune your cv5 to obviously set the top speed and you can choose to tune your cv6 as well to get the mid speed i found no way of uh, getting a speed curve that wouldn't achieve the maximum uh, speed when you've only applied say 40 to 50 percent power and i just couldn't there's no settings i could make that happen uh, with this particular model uh, which is very frustrating because it means you don't get the full range of control across your 0 to 100% power setting, you should have a 0 to 100% velocity or speed setting to go with that. And I couldn't achieve that with this model. So I am going to dock at a point on the uh, performance for that. I didn't find that on the previous Class 800. So something has changed. But otherwise, the performance is really, really good, as you can see here. And it's, it's a joy to run this train. You know, it really was. When I got out on the track, that's kind of what won me over. I did have issues, which I'll talk about. Uh, in the next section about uh, with this model uh, that were kind of very frustrating but once I got it actually out on the track and doing the running session I really enjoyed it I really thought it, was, it looked pretty good um, you know you know the, the niggles that I have regarding uh, uh, some of the cosmetic items and some of the other niggles on the lighting um, they're still there but if you're just running it like this it runs really well and it's a joy to run and uh, it's an excellent model from that perspective so here again, we're coming down to a slow crawl to, to come to a halt. And again, it's, it's, it's really good. So this is all under DCC, obviously. And, um, you know, I've done very little running under DC on this, uh, but I don't believe there should be any issues there either. Uh, so they're really a very satisfactory running session, you know, and a, and a really nice runner and nice looking on the track and on the layout. OK, so now we get into the summary. So we've been looking at the Hornby R3762, uh, Class 800 Azuma. Uh, we've got the five car set with locomotive number 800201 in the LNER Azuma livery. Comes with a five pole skew on motor with all wheel pickup and dual bogey drive. And it runs on a minimum radius two curves. Uh, however, I, due to the overhang, I think it's probably not recommended to run on radius 2. Uh, it could be quite challenging on your layout. I certainly experienced that on my radius 2 curves. So I think uh, stick to maybe a radius 3 or radius 4, say given the overhang due to the longer size cars. Uh, it comes 8-pin DCC ready in both the power and dummy cars. 
and the extra features would be the directional cab and coach lighting uh, which are available both under DCC and DC uh, the only limitation with these is that they they really are limited. There's a single on-off control under DCC, so you can't separately turn on and off the cab and coach lighting, and you can't turn off the coach lighting at all, actually. Uh, once the track is powered, that lighting will come on. It comes with NEM coupling pockets in the nose cones, uh, which have uh, cosmetic couplers that are actually pre-fitted. The unbox weight is 500 grams for the power car, which is a couple of grams heavier than the uh, GWR version, but I think that's uh, just within the tolerance of uh, the componentry. It varies between 172 and 192 grams for the other cars, so they're, they come in at kind of the, the weight of a heavy Mark III coach, effectively, uh, which is probably not uh, unexpected. The car length is 343 millimeters, uh, so that is 13%. Uh, longer than a Mark III coach, which comes in at 303 millimeters. So this is the overhang you're going to have to deal with. Uh, top scale speed I ran with here was 128 uh, miles per hour, at, and that was at 390 milliamps for a five car set. Uh, I say it's at 100% power, but due to the speed curve issues I had, it was actually at about 45% power, and it's flat after that. After that, it was you know still running at the same speed and still drawing the same current. There is a quiescent current when you've got the train on the track for DCC of about 180 to 190 milliamps. So when you're absolutely doing nothing with no sound turned on, just the, the coach lighting will be on on all cars. And obviously there'll be power to the, to the cars. It's on DCC, but not actually running. You will see a, a power draw of up to 190 milliamps, which is kind of surprising. I've never seen that level of a power draw for a train that's not actually running. And that wouldn't be the lights because the lights are too dim. There is actually current getting consumed in the unit in, the, in that state. Maybe this goes back to the issues I had with the speed curves, that there is a kind of a level of current already being drawn by the locomotive. So it's only ready to, to hit that top speed a lot sooner than you might want it to uh, based on the power that you're applying. The retail selling price for the DCC ready models, I've seen them at 391.99 and they go all the way up to the recommended retail price of 477.99. It's interesting that the Celebrating Scotland set, which isn't available yet, is currently priced by Hornby on their website at 434.49. You know, that's a not insignificant uh, lower price than the current set that's available. The other Class 800s from the 2022 range, they're going to come in at 502.49 based on the current pricing on the website. And of course, that could go up as well. And that is not a good price. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So let's get into the scoring. The running performance, I'm giving it a 9 out of 10. It really doesn't have any major flaws when you're on the track, apart from that issue with the speed curve that you achieve the maximum speed, uh, depending on what your CV5 setting is, and you'll achieve that with a power setting somewhere between 40% and 50%. And no adjustment of the CV6 number would actually help me with that. It, it, would, it would move it a slight bit, but I just could not get a kind of a decent power curve. So I'm knocking at one point because of that. It's down to the motor for sure. Uh, it's not the Loxound 5 decoder, which is a really good decoder. And I've got this performance on other trains using that decoder. So I'm taking one off for that. But I have to say that the running performance is excellent. Aside from that, uh, it's super smooth with lots of speed at the top end. You know, real pleasure to run this train. It, this is a really nice train to actually run on your layout. No qualms from that perspective, but you know, there's just that little niggling issue there. Appearance and detail, I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. Obviously, it didn't have quite the livery finish that I was hoping for. And I know some people have mixed views on that. You know, when you look at the side-by-side -side photographs, I really would have liked to have got something that was closer closer to the prototype than this is. Now, that said, it's still a very nice, attractive-looking model. Uh, now, there has been a little bit of roughness, you know, the fuzziness around the LNER logo and what I showed there on the power car. Uh, so there's a few little niggles there. And, you know, one point I'm taking off is for the pantograph from an appearance detail perspective. Uh, it really isn't up to scratch. You really would like a stronger pantograph that you could use and pose on this. And really the ones that are on there are just not usable at all. And they're they're just very brittle and they would easily break. It's an 8 out of 10, unfortunately. Extras and variants. Uh, I've really factored in the lighting limitations here. So this is where the lighting limitations kick, kick in. The fact that the coach lighting is too dim and it's also the wrong color temperature. 
and the lack of lighting control that you have on the set it's really very limited so really taking off some points there uh, obviously there's no driver either uh, so you know there's a few things that it, it is missing from that perspective the build quality and packaging uh, seven out of ten a few issues there i guess the packaging is a little bit crude and it doesn't always protect the kind of rubber gangway connectors i mentioned that i think the packaging could be improved for a model of this cost and and, and this quality and also then there's a few little niggly issues the wires that we're showing on the park car if you may have seen those of the front bogey again that the paintwork detail you know a few things there from a quality perspective that weren't great and then obviously the lighting I uh, had issues with the lighting in both the power and the dummy car, the directional lighting uh, going on and off, and that's due to the contacts that are used uh, to transmit the power to the lights between the base of the unit and the actual body of the unit. They're not cabling that. You know, 7 out of 10, uh, It's these are lower scores than I had for the Great Western uh, livery version. Subsequently, I probably would reduce some of the scores for that model as well. But the other thing that model didn't have was the bad light bleed issue that I experienced here. So, you know, I would put that on the kind of quality side it's a design quality issue uh, that wasn't picked up early in the cycle so the price value and i'm going to do a separate video as to where these numbers come from based on the discounted price i'll give it a score of six out of ten again that's lower than what i would have had for the gwr version but that was that was done against a lower price point if you score it against the rp i'm only giving two out of ten now my final score is based on the discounted price so that's 7.6 that's down there that's not the best score for a model of this quality. It should really be scoring higher than that. But there are issues here, and that's really what I'm trying to extract in this particular review and highlight, I guess, that not everything is as rosy as it seems. This wouldn't be a meaningful video if I didn't give you my feedback on what I have found and uh, put an honest score against that, and that's what I'm trying to do here. So that brings me to my final recommendation. Livery aside, the Hornby Azumas, they're effectively identical to the previous Class 800s, though there does seem to be some variation on the motor side uh, due to some of the, the issue I had there. From a positive perspective, this means they inherit the very smooth running performance and they come with very well-crafted body detail overall. Negative is the fact that they inherit any of the deficiencies of the previous model, so there has been no enhancement on the previous model here, uh, which is disappointing. They've got the flimsy pantographs, the cramped DCC decoder area, the poor internal lighting, limited lighting control, that lack of a, a shinier, more prototypical finish. And you combine that then with the, the, the very bad light bleeding uh, due to the light colored plastic, uh, those sporadic issues with the lighting connections I experienced, and the new inflated price. Uh, and really the Azuma isn't as compelling an offering as it maybe was 12, 18 months ago. Now, did I enjoy running this model and does it run well? Uh, yes, I did, and it does. Uh, does the model look good on the layout? Yes, it does. Will it look good in the dark? No, it won't. Is the pantograph fit for purpose? No, it absolutely isn't. And is the asking price reasonable? No, it isn't, unless you get it at a discount. And I will cover, uh, as I said, my scoring of the asking price in a separate video, and I'll also cover it at the scoring for the class 43 in that video as well and i'll be doing a separate review for one of the new class 43s so despite all its deficiencies this is a very good model and given everything i am recommending it with two caveats the first of those is that you don't have a requirement for nighttime running and if you do and you still choose to purchase this well then you are going to have a mini project on your hands uh, painting the internals of the body shells yourself and for some people that might be absolutely fine and uh, that's fine if you want to do that the second caveat is that you should shop around and get this model for in or around £400 or less. And I think then you'll be getting it at the right kind of price. So there you have it. The Azuma is not at the level I would have hoped it to be, but it's still a very nice model. And lighting aside, I do believe it to be a superior model to the newly introduced ATP, for example. Until Hornby addresses the internal lighting, the light bleed issues and the really poor pantograph, I'm simply not going to purchase another Class 800 or any of the Coach extension packs, and that's my general recommendation to anyone else. As for paying £502 for the next batch of Class 800s from Hornby, I think you probably already know my thoughts on that one. I would still like to see a shiny finish on this and the GWR version. It was done for the GWR Class 43 HSTs and the Mark III stock in the GWR livery. Backman did it on their Class 150s and 158s, so why can't we get it on the Class 800? Please note in the comments if you are with me on this. 
or maybe I'm just barking up the wrong tree here. And as per my other video on this topic, there was also a small matter of having a low-cost TTS option, similar to what is offered for the Class 43 HST. This raises another question, of course, and that's with regard to the future Class 800 models and whether an upgrade to a 21 decoder is on the cards there. If it is, then I think we'd all like to know about it sooner rather than later. So what are your thoughts on the Hornby Class 800 Azuma? Are you happy with it as it is? Or is it a non-runner for you based on some of the issues I've raised here? And if so, which one was a deal breaker for you? I'd love your feedback as always in the comments, please. So thank you for joining today's review. If you found it of use, then please hit the like on the video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. And in the meantime, happy modeling.